your night in California. Here we go. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Ignition. And lift off. Lift off of the Atlas V carrying JPSS 2 and Lofton, a new weather observatory for our planet and a test for planetary exploration. Yeah, Gerald, as we heard uh, Omar Baez say, LSP 100 on its way also. We're very happy for this 100th mission the Launch Services Program. Let's listen in as Jesse Gonzalez and coming up on 30 seconds from the flight vehicle is a half mile in altitude, flight. two miles down range. Traveling at 160 miles per hour. And passing 45 seconds of the flight, continuing to see good operating parameters out of the RD 180. The power of the Atlas V RD 180. And coming up on a minute into flight, the whole thing uh, is ending its roll maneuver, and vehicle body rates are looking good. Getting ready and approaching Mach 1. And passing through 80 seconds into flight, uh, Mach 1, Atlas 5 is now supersonic. That's 769. And vehicle is now passing through max Q, maximum dynamic pressure. 769 miles per hour, 1,234 1, kilometers an hour. going through the area of maximum dynamic pressure on the vehicle. And passing 100 seconds into flight, seeing the RD-180 throttle back as expected. Engine response continues to look good, and vehicle body rates continue to look good at this time. Throttling down just a little bit to reduce Coming the stress. Coming up on two minutes into flight, the vehicle is now 12 miles in altitude, uh, seven miles downrange, traveling at 1,500 miles per hour. And passing 140 seconds into flight, the uh, vehicle has gone to closed loop control, uh, continuing to see stable body rates throughout the boost phase. So the rocket was flying in a trajectory that's programmed in, but now closed loop is taking positional feedback from the rocket sensors to get it into the proper line for trajectory. It's going to maintain that ascent line. Beautiful shot there on board. And RCS is now pressurizing to flight levels. A shot from our infrared camera. And the reaction control system has reached uh, flight levels. Uh, system response looks good. Uh, vehicle body rates continue to look good as well. Um, seeing good response out of the RD-180 engine. Going to start cooling down that Centaur engine in the second stage to prepare for its super chilled propellants to flow through the booster. About uh, three minutes and 15 seconds into flight, vehicle is now 53 miles in altitude, uh, 67 miles downrange, traveling at 5,800 miles per hour. And now seeing the RD-180 throttle back to maintain a 5.0G uh, uh, acceleration limit. Engine response continues to look good. We're just seconds away now from booster engine cutoff. And we did see a good response on the Centaur systems as it completed boost phase chill down. And we have BECO, booster engine cutoff. And we have successful stage separation. With stage separation and now onto the center. On the RL10. And we have ignition for the first burn. Uh, RL10 start parameters look good. And we have good indication of payload fairing jettison. Saw a shot of that booster floating off into space. Yeah, you can actually see the four meter fairing going by there too on the video. 
Uh, that's a great thing looking at the telemetry data. RD-180 performed very well on the first stage. Separation was clean. Payload fairings you can see on the infrared uh, video there on the screen. Uh, the booster falling away and the fairing, two little fairings uh, start pre-start. Coming up uh, on five minutes into flight. Uh, this first burn will be about 13 minutes in duration. The first of uh, three burns for today's mission. Uh, continuing to see stable RL-10 chamber pressures at the beginning of the burn. Some and also seeing uh, stable body rates following uh, payload fairing jettison. RL-10 is performing very well. Pre-start was good. Uh, ignition came out very well as we saw in the video and as the Centaur continues to burn normally uh, body rates on the vehicle look very good uh, with payload fairing gone. Uh, JPS is too exposed to the environments of space. As it uh, warms the motor catalyst beds for operation. Explain quickly what a body rate is. So the body rates, the attitude of Centaur uh, as the vehicle is uh, tr uh, moving through space. And we're trying to keep everything as stable as possible. So we have an X, Y, and a Z body rate on the Centaur. And uh, the flight computer and the RCS system uh, continue to maintain that as uh, we uh, move through to get ready for uh, separation. And now we're moving to ULA's real-time animation. Six minutes in flight, the vehicle is now 250 miles in altitude. 430 miles downrange, traveling at 9,400 miles per hour. The animation is informed by real-time data. As we watch the RL-10 burn and the Centaur fly, at the top of the vehicle is JPSS-2. And there you're looking at the RL-10 RL as it continues its burn. And coming up on seven minutes into flight, uh, continuing to see stable performance across all Centaur systems, uh, stable tank pressures, good performance at a PU, and um, some minor uh, roll adjustments as uh, Centaur optimizes the telemetry link. Right. Centaur with plenty of performance to get there. Plenty of performance and everything's looking great. As we heard uh, Jesse say, everything is uh, performing nominally as we get ready to uh, continue this burn for separation. We're going to keep watching the data and listening to the launch team as we track the performance of the Centaur getting JPSS-2 into orbit. But in the meantime, let's send it back to Megan. If you're just joining us, I'm NASA's Megan Cruz, bringing you live launch coverage from Vandenberg Space Force Base along the central coast of California. Just about seven minutes, 34 seconds ago, we watched as a, a United Atlas, uh, United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket lifted off at 1.49 a.m. Pacific time, and it was a spectacular sight. What a clear night. Uh, no clouds in sight. That rocket just lit up the dark sky. It's flying two important missions today. The primary one is to send JPSS-2 into orbit orbit. It's the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration's newest joint polar weather satellite. The secondary mission is called Lofted, which will demonstrate a new type of heat shield that inflates for atmospheric reentry. We're going to stay with you live for every important mis mission over the next two hours.